Coming up on MHS One. We learn about synesthesia. We explore Partners Theater. And we reflect on our school's origins. And it's all coming up on MHS One. Today is Friday, November 22nd. I'm Sarah Appleby. And I'm Noe Garcia, and you're watching MHS One. McKinney ISD is in the process of redrawing school zone lines to balance the student population at each high school. Here's Ben Tatum and Mallory Hauser with how this process is going to work. With McKinney's rapid population growth, the school district is adjusting school zone lines to accommodate the student populations at each high school campus. We need to make some adjustments to the boundaries so that we can balance things out. Right now, Boyd High School is over capacity. It has 3,043 students. The capacity of Boyd High School is 3,000. So, you know, any future growth in the Boyd attendance zone it will cause problems for Boyd. We don't want to have McKinney High sitting there with room for 1,000 more kids, and we don't have 1,000 more kids basically in that school. McKinney ISD strives to make the process more efficient by allowing students and parents input. We take that information and keep the boundaries as close geographically as possible, but not have an imbalance as far as uh, socioeconomic uh, status of the students. The process for us will be to first develop some new uh, rezoning maps. At that point, we will, we will have an opportunity for public input, so the community will be able to do that uh, through two different vehicles. One will be uh, to go online and complete a form um, to, to provide feedback on, on the proposed map. Uh, the other way that we're going to do it is through um, something that's a little bit new for us, and that's going to be a telephone town hall meeting. The telephone town hall meeting will take place in December where parents can listen into the board meeting and express their opinions over the telephone. The school district hopes that this process will prove effective for the future. Well, McKinney ISD uh, is only 50% built out right now. So the anticipated future enrollment of uh, student enrollment right now looks like at least 55,000 when it's totally built out. So we have to plan for the future. Uh, so the plan is to basically keep Boyd High School and McKinney High fairly full, almost to capacity, uh, so that any future uh, growth will go to McKinney North High School and that will prevent us from having to redo the boundaries, say, five to six years from now. Current students will be impacted in both positive and negative ways. I feel like some of the Boyd kids might be kind of unenthusiastic for coming to high and not really like it much. There is no way to rezone schools and make everybody happy. I mean, it's just a, it's an emotional process. It's a tough process. Um, but in a fast-growing school district, it's something you have to do. This has been Mallory Hauser and Ben Tatum reporting for MHS One. Lauren Castriani raised awareness about anti-bullying when a Plano West student faced a harsh reality of cyber harassment. Here's Sydney Turnbow with the story I'm with Shay. I love to sing. I play softball for PSA. I'm a cheerleader for Plano West. Shay Shawhan is your average teenage girl. There's only one thing that makes her different, and it's her being special needs. Because of this, she has received countless forms of bullying. It started off pretty simple, just with anonymous text messages, and then it turned into, obviously, in February, some pretty hateful messages. My mom and I were watching the news really late at night, and we saw a story about how this girl over at Pin OS was getting bullied, and it showed like all these texts that she was getting. It, it was absolutely terrible, things that they were saying. People were saying that they wanted to kill her, that they wanted to rape her, that she should just go have one of her seizures and die. So right then, my little sister on her baby monitor happened to be crying. She also has Down syndrome, so I just kind of had a moment where I'm just like, oh, oh my goodness, like this could happen to her someday, and I just wanted to do something about it. I have been supported by family members, by friends, and by even people that I don't even know. We found her on Facebook. Her mother had set up an organization called I'm With Shay. And that's where the whole idea for the green shirts came in. It's her favorite color, the lime green. So they just go to all her events and sit there and cheer on. The shirts really haven't done much for me. That's more of just, you know, a sign. Hey, man. Hey, boy. You want to be a new friend? Yeah. Everybody, just tell your friend Shay. 
I took her up on the band platform and I, and I kind of like introduced her to like the whole band and then she said like right there in front of everybody, she goes, hey, I have this for you because you've proven that you're with Shay and I was just like, oh, so cool. If you or anyone you know is being bullied, please speak up. Tip 411, you'll see signs all around the school. You can send a text message to me and it comes directly to my phone or to my email and it's completely anonymous. You I think that people should just, just, you know, like look out for each other. I mean, like, yes, this is kind of a dog-eat-dog -dog world, but I mean, come on, like, there's still some common courtesy going on here. I didn't do it for the recognition. In fact, like, when they went on numerous talk shows, I asked them not to mention my name because it, it isn't about me. It's about doing something for her, and it's about, on even bigger scale, raising awareness for bullying. This has been Sydney Turnbow reporting for MHS One. Hey, Noe, are you doing No Shave November? No, I haven't heard of that. Well, here's Kevin Osborne and Cassidy Carroll to help explain what this month-long tradition is all about. McKinney High School students and teachers are participating in the annual No Shave November. Many students participate but do not know the real reason behind No Shave November. I think No Shave November is about um, supporting all those people out there who have prostate cancer and testicular cancer and um, whenever someone comes up to you and they're like, whoa Brock or hey whoever you are, like what's up with the, uh, what's up with the, the facial hair and you can tell them, you know, hey I'm supporting or I'm helping out those who have uh, prostate and testicular cancer. I think No Shave November is really cool because it kind of gives like high schoolers like whether you can or you can't like the opportunity to just kind of like let it go wild and maybe test the waters you know and see if uh, cause a lot of people don't know how much they can grow. Along with being able to be lazy, Mr. Theme thinks it's a great way to show support. Originally uh, I did not know about Movember. Originally it was just an excuse for me and my roommates not to shave in college uh, and then one of them finally found a cause for it and so he brought up this website and it was called Movember.com. Uh, and what it is, is it's, it's there to raise awareness about prostate and testicular cancer um, and then to, to raise funds for it particularly. Uh, and the way they kind of go about it is um, generally men don't have mustaches or beards these days. And so in November when you start growing this, it, it generally pulls people's attention to you. Mr. Ortiz views No Shave November as a great opportunity to spark conversation about prostate cancer awareness. I've had an excellent opportunity since I usually am so clean cut in my appearance. It has been a great opportunity to talk to people about prostate cancer awareness because um, they just ask, why are you growing your beard out? And so I'll, you know, I'll bring it up and I'll just throw out some quick little facts, you know, well, 217,000 men this year are probably going to be diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, 32,000 of those men are probably going to die, you know, and we have to get checkups because it's one of the most treatable forms of cancer, uh, about 96% success rate if you catch it in time. Um, so it's been a really good conversation piece, which is the point. Mr. Ortiz has been personally affected by prostate cancer within his family. Uh, my grandfather on my mother's side uh, was diagnosed with prostate cancer, uh, but they were able to catch it early and, and treat it. Uh, and he was actually able to, to live for another 10, 12 years after that. And he ended up passing away not from cancer. So it was a very successful treatment. I support prostate cancer awareness. I support prostate and testicular cancer awareness. I support prostate and testicular cancer awareness. This has been Kevin Osborne and Cassidy Carroll reporting for MHS One. You know, if we're gonna work together, I'll pay for everything. I ain't got no money, I won't. <laughs> hey, he's really falling for you. The Fine Arts Department is offering a new program to address the unique artistic needs of students through the use of peer tutors. Here's Yoki Anguela, Aidan Mulligan, and Rachel Winnips with a look at Partners Theater. Structured Teach and Functional Academic students get to participate in Partners Theater. Partners Theater is um, a new class that we started teaching last year. It's based on the premise of Partners PE where we, we offer a very specialized curriculum for our functional academics and our structure teach students. Um, so they have the opportunity to experience theater and the creativity process and the exploration in a um, environment that's suited for them. The traditional regular ed classroom really isn't um, productive, efficient environment for them, so we give them a special group that they can participate in themselves. Partner Seared is such an, a wonderful opportunity for these kids. It helps them socialize, it helps them be comfortable um, expressing themselves, and 
linguistically they're able to um, communicate better. If they have speech pro speech issues, it helps them hone in their speech their speech abilities. And it's just an all-around wonderful program. A volunteer student tells what it's like in Partners Theater. I got into Partners Theater by, um, I don't know, over the summer I just asked Ms. Tooch if that was something that was possible because um, I was in a different theater class to begin with, but I kind of wanted to do something that benefited other people more than myself. So, And it sounded like really fun, and it is. It's totally worth it. This has been Yoki Anguilla, Aiden Mulligan, and Rachel Winnips reporting for Image. One junior struggles with synesthesia, a condition where one of the five senses is perceived with another sense. Here's Eli J with more about Allison Johansson's story. At first glance, you might look at someone thinking they see and hear everything, just like you. But contrary to what you might believe, a few could have a perception-changing disorder that most haven't even heard of. And that disorder is right here at McKinney High School. So when I see letters, they're in color. There's a couple numbers. Um, numbers, yeah, six and eight that are pink, always. And sometimes when I hear certain sounds, it's so like when we play some band music, it'll be red or pink, and it'll just be kind of a hue in front of me. That it's kind of when you put on sunglasses and the, the lens is tinted, it'll kind of turn the world red or yellow for a little bit. This brain condition is called synesthesia, and it is a cross-wiring of the senses from too many brain cells causing hyperactivity in the brain. It can affect any of the senses and changes many factors of everyday perception. Well, so like you see, if something is printed in black, you're going to see those letters in black. But no matter what they are for me, A is always going to be pink and B is always going to be blue. A lot of people, when they figure out that I have it, ask me, well, what is it like? And I don't, I never know how to answer that because it's, it's just what I know. I mean, what is it like to not see them? That'd be the better question. Although it's uncommon to have one person affected by synesthesia in one school, it is even more unlikely to have two cases of it. Extraordinarily, a student and a teacher in McKinney High School have cases of this rare brain condition. This teacher uses the ability to her own advantage. Certain sounds have a color, like there's brown sounds and orange sounds and red and cool blues and uh, bright blues and soft greens. And um, so when I hear sounds, I'm looking for that tone color, that sound. And I often describe when I'm talking to my students about, I want it to be like this real round sound, like really good chocolate, like a dark, deep brown. Or I want it to be real light, like a soft spring green. And what I hear with my kids, I'm looking for a very specific color palette and if one person is sticking out of that color palette then it's it's like throwing a neon crayon into a whole bunch of pastels and so I have to find that sound and I have to fix it so that it blends in to make the right color palette. While the normal brain perceives a song with everyday colors, a brain affected by synesthesia will mix the different tone qualities with whatever color was associated with it and developed during childhood. Watch as this normal point of view changes to the aspect through Allison's eyes. I don't, I don't know if it, if it bothers her or not, but I, I kind of hope she enjoys it because it's not something everybody gets to enjoy. And so I think it's kind of cool that it's very unique. And so she gets to see you know, a whole color palette, a whole world that somebody else doesn't get to see. The next time you hear a beautiful piece of music, imagine what you would see. This has been Eli J reporting for MHS One. Up until 1967, McKinney was not only home to one high school, but two. 
We now bring you the story of Doty High School. Doty High School was the segregated school for African Americans in McKinney up until the 1960s. Mr. Jesse McGowan, graduate of the class of 1959, Miss Iola Malvern, class of 1943, Mr. Leonard Evans, class of 1942, and Miss Evelyn Johnson, teacher at Doty High, were all community members with McKinney schools named after them. And Doty School came from a, from a school that was over on the Davis property which was my grandfather's property. And th there was a school there, and that was the first Doty, uh, not Doty, but first black school that was uh, in McKinney at that particular time. And when that school closed, it was moved over to the campus that came, became uh, Douglas School. Doty High received many of their school supplies secondhand, including their sports equipment, but that didn't stop Doty from excelling in many different sports. We won, won a lot of events. We lost a very few. We had good athletes and we, they were dedicated. So the most important thing is to get your lessons so you can play. In 1965 and 1966, McKinney gave Doty students the option to integrate, and in 1967, Doty officially closed, and McKinney High School became fully integrated. We basically just talked to them that this is something that's coming, and it's going to have to be done. And so, you know, to get your minds ready for, for the change, and it's going to be different, and just be the type of students that you were at Doty. Go over there, study hard, work hard, and try to cooperate with the teachers. I guess I was the first man to integrate schools, and my preparation was zero. The superintendent uh, called Ruben and said, Ruben, I want you to send Leonard Evans to my office. I said, when? I said, right now. So Ruben came and got me and said, Leonard, you've got to go to the office. Superintendent's office. He called me and I went in, in his office. He said, Leonard, I want to tell you something. Oh, okay, what is it? Dr. Harper. He said, You will be going, you will integrate schools Monday morning at Southward School, a Spanish thing. And Southward, those of you who know about Southward, then it's South Part of Town, it was Cotton Mill District. Mm -hmm. And they weren't very kind to blacks. And I knew this before I got there, but I was kind of determined to go and see what it was like. When I got inside of the door of South Ward School, they had a table as long as from here to, to that hallway, full of food, tablecloth, everything. Welcome Coach Evans at the end. Man, you talking about a surprise. I was glad to see that somebody had some sense. The, the person in charge of the teacher and parent group, they, uh, they welcome me with arms wide open. This January, McKinney High School will be unveiling a new display case in the front entrance of the building, completely dedicated to Doty High. This has been Sarah Appleby, reporting for MHS One. Well, that's all we have for you today. For more news, visit MainstreamNews.com. And remember, if it's news, and it's at McKinney High School, it's, it's MHS1. MHS